the Romans had a different concept of learning than the Greeks. Um, they weren't into it for its own intellectual enterprise, for the sensuousness of just pure learning, of pure reason. So the Romans, when they come in, they love the trappings. Uh, they like being mummified. They love the idea of immortality. But supporting the library is another thing. But still, the Library of Alexandria continued to produce scholars bent on discovery. Claudius Ptolemy, a Roman of Greek descent, was born around the end of the first century AD. He was educated at the library and museum and published books on world geography and science. Using the work of Hipparchus before him, Claudius wrote volumes of works on astronomy and astrology. Claudius promoted the idea that the Earth was the center of the solar system. This became known as the Ptolemaic system of astronomy and was used up through the 16th century. I know that I am mortal and ephemeral, but when I scan the circling spirals of the stars, no longer do I touch Earth with my feet, but sit with Zeus himself and take my fill of the ambrosial food of the gods. Claudius Ptolemy. Claudius Ptolemy lived during a relatively peaceful time in Roman history. But by 200 AD, Alexandria faced invasion and plunder from abroad. The most important days of learning and knowledge had passed from the great city forever. The story of what precisely caused the overall destruction of the library may be lost to time. Accounts from various sources conflict with one another and with modern historians. The subject remains controversial. By 400 AD, paganism was outlawed and Christianity prevailed as the official religion of the Roman Empire. The Emperor Theodosius ordered the destruction of all monuments and temples which did not honor Christianity. Pagan scholars were murdered in the streets. And during a time of constant ethnic confrontation and rebellion, the library may have been destroyed by the Christians. In 616, Alexandria was overtaken when the Persians conquered Egypt. That same century then brought Arab conquest to the land of the pharaohs, and with it, the Islamic religion of Mohammed. Was this the point in history the library was finally destroyed? I think most people today who studied the problem would say that the real destruction came when the great Muslim army crossed the delta took and sacked the city. Alexandria surrendered to the Arabs, who decreed that if the library's contents contradicted the Islamic faith, the book should be destroyed. And if they supported the Islamic faith, the books were unnecessary and should be destroyed. Either way, legend tells us that the Arab rulers ordered all of the books in the Alexandrian collection to be burned. All of the stories surrounding the decline and destruction of the Alexandrian library may combine to provide the truth. Perhaps the great institution died by degrees. Caesar's fire here, the lack of funding there, the Christian revolution, Muslim invasion, and finally, the coastal climate of the fine port city may have contributed to the loss of the largest collection of scrolls in antiquity. Whatever may have remained could have just disintegrated. Perhaps what is important is not how the library disappeared, but that it ever existed. I think the wonderful thing about the Library of Alexandria is that they did it that the Ptolemies were willing to support this group of scholars that didn't do anything for the Greek economy. It, they didn't bring in money. They didn't make any contribution to 
the Ptolemies' lifestyle, but they still supported it. It was a sense of learning for its own sake, and that's wonderful. The legacy of the library in Alexandria is our modern-day world research center. There, 2,000 years ago, scholarship was a shared endeavor in which great minds from all over could work together to solve the mysteries of the age. The legacy of Alexandria is tied into the very origin of modern thought.